home, beloved. I just tell you, I'll be home tonight. And I'm glad that God put a desire down in my soul. I want to be in the house of God. I would rather be amongst God's people than I would be working. Amen. And Brother Jeff, I would rather be behind the poor pit preaching the word of God as I would be eating. I like to eat. And you can't tell, I like to eat, brother. It's my favorite pastime. But I'd rather look in the word of God any day in the air and say, hey, Lord, I give me something out of your word. I can feast on the day. I would rather have this is have the table of my of food because this is my spiritual life. Oh, this is my life, brother. A pastor that keeps me going tomorrow. This is my life that make me come back to the house of God on Sunday. This is my life today to get me out of bed before Sunday school and they get me to the house of God on time. I can sit there in Sunday school. I can say, hey, teacher, teach me something. Tell me something. Show me something in the Word of God. I like it, brother. Tell me what it open up the word of God and begin to read the scripture and God begins to deal and he begins to open up the word of God to me and I sit in the house of God and I say thank you Lord you gotta walk holy amen he say put you what do you mean holy to receive anything from God we gotta be holy all week it's not a Wednesday religion it's not a Sunday religion it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, salvation. Amen. Salvation will make the difference. Religion will drop you, but salvation will make the difference. And my friend, you say, what do you mean, preacher? A lot today gets religion when they come down to an altar and they don't get salvation. And that's why they get up six months later. And by the time they're living in the hell holes of this world, and one more time, and they live like the devil one more time, it's because they never got to live born again. Never get in the word of God. I don't know what God said, but when the, whole, the devil moves out, the Holy Ghost will move in and it'll make a difference. You remember the young man that was in the scriptures and the Bible says he swept his house out. He swept it out. Not God. He swept it out, Brother Tommy. And no doubt he did good for a few days. And the Bible tells me that seven more came back into place. Amen. Seven more came back. And I also found another young man. His name, brother, my friend, I want you to know he roamed the, he roamed the tombs. And the Bible says the Lord made his way over to the tombs. I want you to know, he said, my name is Legion. He said, because I'm full of devils. I want you to hear me tonight, but when God got down with him, honey, his name wasn't Legion no more. And God changed his name. He changed his walk. He changed his talk. Oh, boy, Satan and Claude. Lord, it is right now before God Almighty. God said, I made a difference in his life. He said, I didn't come to condemn you. He said, I come to help you. John tells me in verse 17, he said, I said, not my son into the world to condemn the world. He said, what but the world through him might be saved. Brother, I want you to know something, Tommy. That old boy knew he was condemned already. But I want you to see the difference. That young man that swept his house out, I want you to know he came more possessed. He came more possessed. I want you to know this much day they come down to an altar tonight and don't get truly born again into God's family. Oh, they become more possessed and more possessed. They get worse and worse and worse as the day goes on. And my friend, I want you to know something. One day they're in the house of God, the next day they're out. One day they're in the house of God, the next day they're out. Brother Tommy, one day they're singing to God. And the next day they're singing with the devil. You say, why is it, preacher? Why can't they be holy? Because the holy one ain't in them. But that old, get, that old legion, God swept him out. God polished him up. The Bible says he was clothed. And in his right mind. Bible says he sat at the feet of Jesus clothed in his right mind. Hey, brother, I'm telling you today, when God gets done with you, if you've truly been born again, I want you to know he'll make you holy if you submit yourself unto God. If you look up to God and say, God, today, I want to walk in thy ways. I want to talk in thy ways. God, today, you help me not to fall. God, today, you lead me, guide me, and take me a long, lost way. And God, and hey, I'm holy, and I'll lead you down the holy paths. But he said, not be conformed. I don't want to be conformed, Brother Jeff, tomorrow to this world. 
when I go on my job site tomorrow, but I want you to know something. I don't want to be conformed to the world. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I don't want to get angry. You say, what do you mean? I don't want to blow up and get mad, Brother Tommy. I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to act, I don't want to act in a way that they won't relate me to God. I want to act in a way, Brother Tommy, that when they see me, they say, hey, you know what? That young man's got something that I want. He's got something that I desire. He's got somebody they call Jesus. And I want to know him today. He said, put your way, can't read like that. Listen to what he said in chapter 13. He said in verse 11, he said, now knowing that it, he said, now knowing, now knowing the time, that now it's high time to awake out of a sleep. Hey, man. He's sitting out gnawing. It's right now that it's high time. Uh, Brother Tommy, to wake up out of our sleep. Uh, you say, what do you mean, preacher? Uh, I'm telling you, if we're going to live for God, uh, we're going to have to live for God today uh, because tomorrow may never come. Uh, for the Christian folk, uh, I want you to know the rapture may take place. Uh, we may get out of here tonight. Uh, and we may live for God while we're here. He said, it's high time we wake up. You say, what do you say, preacher? It's high time that my friend, we say, God, we want to be holy. Amen. God, I want to be like you. I want to walk in your ways. I want to talk in your ways. Uh, my friend, I used to go to church with a fellow. I want you to know he loved God. Uh, he was a drunk. Uh, oh, how he was a drunk. Uh, I want you to know, friend, uh, he would catch your neck in a heartbeat. Uh, but when God got a hold of him, uh, hey, 27 years later, he still take the word of God and he snuggle that to him. He say, I thank God for the word. Made a difference in his life. I went to see him in UT Hospital. He was laying there on his deathbed. They was getting ready. They are turning the machines off. I walked in and I said, Brother, I want you to know I love you. I'm going to see you on the other side. Oh, my heart broke. Hey, man, you know why God made a change in him? Hey, 20 some years later, Brother Tommy, he hadn't made his way back to the bottle, but he made his way to the glory land. He made his way home. And he said, Lay down that deathbed. I said, Brother, I love you. I see you on the other side. And that man that couldn't speak, that man that couldn't talk, that man my friend, he couldn't walk. That man was on his way home. He opened up one eye and he looked at me and smiled real big. He knew where he was going. God made a difference. Oh, they walked in there, and Brother Tommy, and they turned that machine off. And the brother opened his eyes, and then one little tear trickled down his chest of his cheek. And I want you to know, friend, as they turned that machine off, the life went out of him. He was gone. I want you to know, you say, what are you saying there for, preacher? God took a drug and made something out of him. God took a drug and my friend made somebody love the Lord and was smitten lives under God today. I got to take the dope addict. It'll take the drug addict. It'll take the drug. It'll take my friend those that like to lay around and change their lives. It'll make something out of them. If it only help my friend humble under God. But he said, it's high time. We wake up. I want you to know, Bible says, verse 12, he said, hey, he said, why? He said, not as far as spent. It's not, Brother Jeff. It's not. Not as far as spent. I want you to know, in the next verse, he said, let us what? Walk honestly. But then in the next verse, he said, put you on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Put you on the Lord Jesus. You say, what do you mean put him on? Put Jesus, what he said. Paul didn't make no mistake when he said that. He said, put you on the Lord Jesus. You say, what am I supposed to do in the morning? You're supposed to get up and put on the Lord Jesus. What am I supposed to do in the morning? You're supposed to go to bed putting on the Lord Jesus. You say, what am I supposed to do in the middle of the day? You're supposed to put on the Lord Jesus. And if we put him on, we'll be holy. You say, can't be holy all the time, preacher. We can be holy. You say, preacher, we can't. Oh, if God's name, I want you to know our salvation. It ought to be something that we raise both hands in the air by the time and say, God, I thank you, Lord, for saving me. I heard a youth group today sing a song called The City of Refuge. And they sung about how when the Lord went to Calvary. They went back in the Old Testament. Remember the cities that God gave them for the refuge? 
And the song started out that way. But when I got to the course of it, by the time my soul bubbled over, I want you to know I sat there in tear 